and uh, the influence of the mask on my art, which people say looks sometimes like Picasso, but I'm using the same sources. I'd much rather have the African mask than have, uh, have a Picasso. Okay, uh, we're gonna talk about the influence of the mask on Picasso, Matisse, Blamenc, and Duran, and the influence of the mask on modern art, and uh, the influence of the mask on my art, which people say looks sometimes like Picasso, but I'm using the same sources. I'd much rather have the African mask than have, uh, have a Picasso. A, 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 a good tribal mask is worth me much more than uh, Picasso, even though the Picasso would cost a lot more. When we're, and also the effect it had on when he uh, developed, he and Brock developed Cubism. And, the, and along with the influence of Cezanne on them and the influence of Cezanne on the people don't realize the foes, the people, the, the wild beasts, as the, as the, which means in the French, the foes, guys that worked with the bright colors and uh, bolder colors. And after post-impressionism, you, you took French painting a lot farther by being bold. But after you've been bold, and then you have Gauguin going off to Tahiti and, and to the south, Southern Pacific Islands, all this revolves around the, the, the importance of uh, several museums in Paris that were there from the 1860s on. And they were the museums dealing with colonial art, dealing with ethnography. There's an ethnographic section in one of the museums, in the Museum de Homme. And that was one of the, had uh, in the French colonies of West Africa. Remember West Africa, if you look on the map, uh, in, the old, in the old map, you'll see that these, a lot of them were French colonies. When you look at the, the East African side, it was British colonies. But mostly the French colonies were on the west coast of Africa. And consequently, most of those museum pieces were dealing with the west coast African art. Let's look at uh, some of the other effects that we had on uh, this period. Uh, but first I want to uh, show you a, a book that is a b basic book by the Museum of Modern Art that under the one of the uh, uh, curator guys, uh, Goldwater was the guy that uh, insisted on, on eventually doing a book like this. And this is, this is volume one. And if you look at Picasso, and if you look at the mask, it tells you the story right away. There can be no cubism if there wasn't African sculpture and there wasn't those museums in Paris. But that's not how the artist found out about, about the, the, the sculptures. It was in a bar and Duran and Blamanc, who were foes, this is before, the, the group before, Cube, before the Cubists, they see in this, this guy's got a bar decorated with African sculpture in it. And he tells them about the museum. And they tell Matisse about the museum because they were all working together at this point. And that's what happens when you have these museums in Paris, ethnographic museums of the French colonies. Colonial museums of the, of the, of the and studies of the ethnographic sections of Africa and they were never they were they were very hardly even there people never went to them or anything but when when the artists started using them and we'll look in the we'll show you through pictures in the book that will give you that idea that the importance of 
the effect of colonialism and bringing back the, the, the sacred arts in the most cases of the African artists. Now, I'm going to go over in that's, that side of the story. The other side of the story for Picasso and for Brock, when they, when they invented the first invention of the synthetic cubism, they, it was through the African sculptures and Cezanne's overlapping planes and painting in a manner where the paint paralleled the picture plane. And I'm gonna show you how this works over here. If you start, if you stick, look here and you see the space is made not in, pers this is kind of a reverse perspective, but it's this planes going back, overlapping planes. Cezanne starts seeing more and more planes and he parallels the picture plane with his paint strokes going more or less up, up and down, making planes of color. When we see, when we see this overlapping, how do you go back? You don't go back in perspective, you go back in overlapping. You can, use a, you can use a little bit of perspective by making each plane smaller as it goes back. You could go, uh, for example, okay, so that's, this is, and then you, if you painted this in, and you painted that in, now the black, this goes, this goes back, this comes forward. To understand that is to understand that the indigenous people of Africa, of any any tribal people, people that were not part of the West the, the Western industrialization, they understood this not only psychologically but spiritually. If you said to if you said to them, what, how how far is that? They'd say, how far is this? To understand that is to be is to have the breaking down of our sense of perspective in Western art. At this point, they already had the influences of the Japanese and Japanese woodblock prints, Chinese. Korean folk painting, all that, all the things that make us see the line differently and positive negative space. This is not positive negative space. This is space that overlaps. When we begin to see What's happening in, in our vision after we've seen, looking at these paintings, we don't have the sense of, of space the same way. We learned from the Chinese that the closest distance between two points is the distance between our eyes. So light, things get bigger as they go back in Chinese painting, in Japanese painting, which is influenced by Chinese painting, Korean painting, Asian painting. 
So the closest distance is the distance between our eyes is a way of seeing. Then all of a sudden, we start seeing this overlapping plane. But it happens that in, in the Renaissance, some of the artists were using planes and geometry and all that from uh, uh, one, of the, one of the big influences and in the, in the Baroque period was the, the Jesuit cosmology. And what we're looking at in this is we're beginning to put all these things together. It's up and down or uh, you do that and you get another you get another sense of space. When, when we uh, look at the, some of the examples in the book, and also we will look at some of my masks, we will, you'll realize that without, without the African mask, many things that we take for granted, styles that we take for granted, Picasso, Matisse, uh, especially Picasso, of all of them used the primitive. He had a huge primitive art collection. Let's, let's look at one of my masks. This is from Mexico, and this is carved out of wood, and it's a dance mask, so it has some uh, eye slits. Now look at one side here as the conquistador, and one side is the, ind uh, the indigenous. Now, is that cubism? No, if you ask the artist, he would say cubism what? He, didn't, he wouldn't have known what it was. He saw, they saw, be long before the modern quote modern artist saw. Look. Profile. Two profiles put together. Brock was a master of, of, of using this in, in still lifes. And, and adding the figure later. But this is what makes you, makes uh, what we, we would call the, 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 the individual in two parts or three parts, in this case, two different people in one piece. This is from the Gabon part of Africa. And the spots, it's a little dusty, but anyway, that spotting, which they, the person that made this would not have said, oh, I put the spots on here just to make spots. It, this, he was decorating it to honor it. So later when artists were doing this, putting spots on people and they saw this kind of mask, it was the seeing of this mask. It wasn't that they just said, oh, I think I'll put some spots on this. It was the influence. Okay, let's look at this and see it in terms of another way of looking. I'm going to turn this paper upside down. When Brock and Picasso and Juan Gris, the famous still life artists who died, as the, uh, it was the, the main three uh, in Cubism. You see, that uh, 
idea of two sides equal a whole, but in this case, it's more, it's more, it's part of the same person. In that case, it's deliberately two people in the mask that we just looked at. If we look at that, those lines going back, all you have to do, if you're a cubist, you might do this. Picasso, as he was given to do, some of Picasso's collection of primitive art. And you got a room full of Picassos. But he also collected 20th century art. One of his studies for the women of Avignon. They first find, the, the uh, French artists first find in 1905, when they start seeing that, when they start going to the Museum of Primitive Art and collecting this. The Picasso uh, starts incorporating uh, Cezanne as Duran and Dornick and the, uh, the, the Forbes were doing, but a little differently. This is Picasso up here, and this from this mask here. This is in the Women's of Avignon, 1907 study for the famous. Now, for many years, we didn't know about the painting, the large painting that Picasso caused the introduction of Cubism, although Brock would argue that as they shared a studio and they were so close alike, Picasso, in this period where he's putting the, the women together, Picasso, and there's the mask. Picasso, and there's the mask. Here he's the sketching out the women of Avignon, the Mademoiselle Diabon. He starts. Then he starts taking off on the Western nudes. And here it is. This is what he ended up with. And that was now the most famous painting of that period. Very clearly, and he would say too, that it was the African sculpture and Cezanne that helped him and Brock invent Cubism. Matisse, later, and using these patterns and shapes because for Matisse, pattern was much more important than for Picasso. Matisse, before Picasso does the Women's of Avignon, It's a portrait of one of his uh, collectors. So they're influenced by all of this yeah. sculptures, really, on these masks. Right, masks, yeah. And that's the famous portrait that Matisse does of, I can't remember her name, but anyway. Oh, it was his, this, one, this one is his wife, but I can't remember the name of the other one that's very similar. But look at the African sculpture in there. The influence is in there, isn't it? They're right there. Yeah. The inspiration, influence, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. 
and it fits with the period being these are still colonies of France. Gauguin goes off to the to the Pacific Islands in Tahiti and, and starts working on this, pet, what we call Nebus, or that's the pattern, like Toulouse-Lautrec, like, like Gauguin. And Gauguin wants to go, he can't, for, uh, he hates the industrial age, he wants to find the primitive, he wants to go back to those islands. And this is a Gauguin's drawings up there, of their sculptures and things. That he discovers? He just, yeah, he discovers them, quote, discovers them. Where he, 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 he learns of them and He learns of them, them right. Yeah, yeah. To say he discovered would be, yeah. Uh, that's a totally different yeah. frame. That's the wrong word to use. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and that's his young wife. He married a, he, he was married to a, a, a he was a, he was a stockbroker and he was married to a, 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 a traditional French bourgeois woman and uh, they had a couple of kids. And then one day he took off and decided he was going to be an artist. Anyway, this is the 14-year-old that he married when he was in Gauguin. And then Gauguin was in Tahiti. This is Gauguin made this jug. You don't think of these being uh, that. But here is, this is Machu Picchu. Now tell me, look, in the Museum of Primitive Art, look at that. Not, not primitive at all, right? But there, there's the two. Now tell me who, who influenced who. Here's about 500 years difference. Gauguin's doorways. He loved to carve in the door. That's why he made the wood blocks that he made and, and textured them with, with using sandpaper and everything else he could find. This is in the Museum of Modern Arts, African, African Negro, it's called at the time in New York before they build the uh, the Museum of Modern Art, but the, the collection's getting ready for this to show the influence. This is a headdress. Is that cubism? Is this futurism and the Italian futurists and things spinning around? Who did it first? This is from Zaire, that's Central Africa, right? That's the, the Belgium, but it was called the Belgium Congo in the colonial days. This is wood and metal combined. From Zaire. Zaire. Now who's, who's more modern? This is from the this is from the Eastern Republic of the Cameroon. Look at all those lines. Look at the patterns. Much more interesting than if uh, if some if a modern artist or from a 20th century viewpoint painted it. All right, that's already been done. It's already been done, and not uh, and uh, again. What is this? This is Nigeria. Excuse me? Is this cubism? Is this a modern sculpture of the early 20th century? No, this is Nigeria. In, 18, in the 1800s. <laughs> kind of blows your mind, huh? 
Wow, look at those. This is Zaire against the Belgium Congo, as when we, when, we, when the colonial days it would be labeled Belgium Congo, and now it's changed its name about four times. But so the masks, these physical objects, pieces of art, yeah, have. Uh, a correlation or an influence um. it's all it, it's all there and the way, and the farther you go into Africa away from the coastline the more abstract the pieces get now I'm going to show you something that people don't realize about somebody who I just love his work but it, uh, let me see if I have it got the right Okay, what's this? Is that a modernist piece with all this stuff? No. Look at these. These are all tribal works, not necessarily African, some parts. Okay, here's Giacometti. Right, Giacometti got the high. One, one time, had the highest price for any artist's work for his pieces of sculpture and his paintings. Giacometti was incredible. Excuse me. Tanzania. Tanzania. <laughs> so incredibly fascinating, interesting. Paul, Paul Clay, you know, playing and from the Bauhaus and the small pieces that, where he used to work like, and he, he lecture and work at the same time and he had about 15 paintings going on at the same time in the Bauhaus. And then later in, when, he was, when, he, when he escaped Hitler and they went to Switzerland to go back to live in Switzerland, he was a Swiss artist. But look at that, one of his, collect from his collection. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> it's all there. You can see it if you, if you know to look for it, right? Picasso. Picasso. Oh, you got three eyes down. That must be Picasso. Oh, so I'm sorry. There's three eyes down on both sides. <laughs> and what is this piece from? Where? This one, uh, this one I have to, uh, this is uh, the People's Republic of Congo. Congo, yeah. So that's the Central African again. Yeah. Okay, Picasso, Picasso. Three eyes, it's gotta be Picasso. I mean, that's Picasso, right? I mean, that's Picasso. So did Picasso travel to the Congo or did he no, see he, the masks in the museum? He collected them. He collected them and he saw the masks in oh, the museum. How did he get them though? Well, you could. they were starting to sell them. Got and, he, it. and he bought them all up as much as he could. and. And Matisse brought up all kinds of tapestries from Morocco. He went to Morocco as a student. He came back with tapestries and textiles that were just such a big part of his art. Zaire, Paul Clay, Zaire, Paul Clay. Anyway, the book is great and it's full of it. Here's Picasso before Cubism. When he was working more closer to his father's look. His father was quite an acceptable artist in Bar in, in taught at the, at the Academy in Barcelona. This is Lipschitz, the famous modernist sculpture using cubism and, other, and his other things. Uh, excuse me. A, a seated couple 
tamale. <laughs> okay. Chocolate midi. And, uh, and this is the one from the an African. What is that saying about a great artist? Yeah. They copy and steal everything. Yeah. Well, I mean, Picasso said I could I can make as many Picassos as you want, but he was joking about it because he could you know he but but in his last life. This is Azumi, Arizona. Okay, this is our, our you know, Southwestern art, Indian art, right? Mm -hmm. That's clay. It's really just amazing. Incredible the forms, right? That you yeah. see that are simil similarities. But the important thing is that that they also learn from them. But they didn't have the one thing that these have, and that I tell people to look for in a mask is let me give you a look at that piece. I mean, if that wasn't it wasn't in the show of early 20th century modern art, it would be, be a surrealist, a surrealist. Okay, again, we go back to this. This is the basis of that. That's so cool. Multiple aspects, remember that, multiple aspects is what we're really talking about. And uh, the influence of the mask on my art, which people say looks sometimes like Picasso, but I'm using the same sources. I'd much rather have the African mask than have, uh, have a Picasso. A, a, a good tribal mask is worth to me much more than uh, Picasso, even though the Picasso would cost a lot more. <laughs>